Hello, and welcome to The Mastering Show. My name is Ian Shepard. I'm a mastering engineer, and I run the Production Advice website, helping you get better results recording, mixing, and mastering your music. And this episode is a little bit different from the usual. It's a little bit off topic, but not at all off topic for the, for the time when I'm recording it. Uh, this is now the beginning of the third week of complete, I guess, lockdown here in the UK because of the coronavirus outbreak. And I know a lot of people are finding things really tough because of it. Uh, if you run a studio, if you work in a recording studio, basically your business has stopped. Um, any kind of one-to-one -one recording or mixing or mastering work is basically on hold for the foreseeable future. And I know lots of people are finding that very challenging and finding the thought of that very challenging. So in this episode, I want to share with you some ways that maybe you can overcome that by using the technology that's available to us to work remotely. I'm lucky. I'm working remotely for almost all the mastering I do these days anyway. So in that sense, the virus hasn't had a great deal of impact on my workload. Whether as time goes on, that's going to change because of people's financial situation and their ability to get out and work with other musicians and collaborate, time will tell. So I'm going to have to wait and see about that. But the good news is that remote collaboration on audio projects is possible. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you ideas that hopefully will help you work remotely directly with your clients. So not just in the sense of you send me the files, I send you the files back, but actually real-time collaboration with a conversation between you so that you can, you know, if you're mixing, you you spend a day or two doing the, the, the mixes to get them to the standard that you can, and then you can share them with your clients or with your band members or uh, your friends, whoever it might be, and actually play it to them in real time and make adjustments in real time and they can participate in that process and even see what's going on. Exactly the same strategy will work for a mastering session and also maybe potentially for some of you there, even if you're not already thinking about this, it could work in a teaching situation as well. I've been looking for a way to do remote uh, workshops with people for years and <laughs> this situation has prompted me to look into it and discover that actually that's entirely possible with very high quality audio. You can even use the strategies I'm going to suggest in this episode to record, although there are some uh, restrictions to that. I mean, live recording with groups of musicians really still isn't possible, but recording overdubs is absolutely possible. And there are even some suggestions that might help you play as well. Jam, maybe. Uh, and those are kind of less solid, I would say, but we'll get onto those in due course. So obviously there have already a ton of apps out there that enable us to talk over the internet, uh, even with video chat. So you've got Skype, you've got Zoom, uh, Google Hangouts, although those are now part of Google Apps and not as widely available as they were. There's one thing that unites all of these things together, in my experience, and that is that the audio is terrible. Um, and that, of course, is a major problem if you're trying to work in audio. So if you don't find that acceptable, you're going to have to fall back on the idea of sending files in advance, getting people to listen, send notes back via email, all the rest of it. That can work. Uh, in fact, lots of us already work that way anyway, but there's nothing quite like being able to play something to somebody and say, okay, how about this? What do you think of this? More, less. It's a much faster and more efficient way of working, as we all know, and that's the goal uh, for the strategies we're going to talk about in this episode. And I'm actually going to suggest one particular plugin to help you with almost all of these problems. That's not necessarily to say that it's the best. There's a variety of ways of achieving these things, and I'll look at some of them um, briefly in a minute. But I think this one plugin uh, called Listen To, made by Audio Movers, which you can find at audiomovers.com, actually provides a solution to almost all of these situations that we're talking about. It's affordable. You only have to pay for it when you need it. And it works in any DAW. And it will allow you to stream lossless audio to a browser or another DAW with very low latency. And yes, you heard that right. Lossless audio. 16, even 24-bit audio with low latency. Now, 
I actually made a video showing how this works, and there's a particular strategy that I'm going to suggest that you use audio movers listen to in combination with a video app, which I'll, so I'll describe that for you in a second. But if you just want to get straight to the nuts and bolts, if you're already way ahead of me with this, head over to productionadvice.co.uk forward slash remote dash audio, and we'll include that link along with all the other stuff that I mentioned in this episode in the show notes on the website at themasteringshow.com. As I say, that video describes exactly what I'm about to describe to you here, but visually and with uh, more detail. So I'm just going to give an overview in this. If you want to really know how to do this and it's not clear from what I say, head over and take a look at that. So listen to is very simple to use. Uh, You just insert it onto any channel that you like in your DAW, but typically you would put it on the stereo output bus last in the chain. You click the log in button so that it registers itself online. You have to have an account to use this. Um, And it's, I'd say it's a subscription service, but you actually pay either weekly or monthly or yearly. So, you know, you can choose when to use it and it's very affordable. When I took a look, I think it was $5 for a week or $10 for a month. And then you name the session, you set the parameters that you want in terms of the quality of audio, the the bit rate, whether you want it to be uh, a lossy AAC stream for lower data bandwidth or whether you want to broadcast lossless audio or not. And the plugin provides you with a link that you can copy. Then you click start broadcasting uh, and then anything that gets played through the plugin is sent out over the internet and can be received using that link. So if you're working with somebody who also has a DAW, they can paste that link into a receiver plugin at the other end and it will come up in their DAW and they can listen to it. Or they can just paste that link into a browser and listen to it directly. So in almost no time at all, you have a way of streaming lossless audio, which is fantastic to begin with. But then the trick is to combine that with some kind of video chat software like Zoom or Skype or a Google Hangout. or I mean, you could use anything you like. You could use FaceTime. You could use, uh, I guess, WhatsApp. In the video, I suggest you use Zoom because one of the great things about Zoom is that you can go to the audio properties section and it will actually tell you the latency of the video stream, which means you know exactly what to set in the Listen To plugin as well. That means that if you share your screen over Zoom, People can actually see what you're doing in the DAW as well as hearing it with high quality audio. And this was an approach that was suggested to me by Ian Stewart, who now writes for Isotope. And we were doing some testing with various different video streaming apps trying to get decent quality audio for the purposes of working remotely and failing And he mentioned that he'd heard of this plugin. Perhaps we could run the two at the same time. And actually, both of us were really sceptical. I just didn't think that there would be sufficient bandwidth, perhaps, or that the match in the latency would be close enough to make it work. But actually, it really does. And since uh, putting that video up, I guess, nearly two weeks ago now, I've just had so many people getting in touch saying that they've used this strategy and it's worked fantastically well for them. And that includes some really pretty big names. So I highly recommend you try this strategy. And as I say, the key point is to run two different applications, the listen to application for the high quality audio, and then a video app of your choice for the chat. Now, I'm recommending Zoom because of, as I say, the the fact that it tells you the latency. But the other amazing thing, you can go one step further with Zoom, which is that if the user streams their audio to you rather than you streaming your audio to them. Let's say you have somebody who has a mix um, and you were going to, you're the producer and you were going to go in and work with them on it. And now that's not possible. If they share their audio with you and also their screen, Zoom actually allows you to request to take control of their computer. So you can control their DAW remotely and hear the results in real time. Now, there is some latency in that. It's going to be of the order of 200 milliseconds, but it's workable. If you don't try and do anything too quickly, uh, you can absolutely make this work. And that's why I say this is also a great strategy for teaching, because that's exactly the kind of situation, you know, often I get requests from people, 
asking how to get better results with the the work that they're doing. And so I will go out and work with them and we'll, I'll look at their situation and we'll we'll use one of their projects, a real life project, uh, in order to improve things and for me to suggest some strategies to them and show them what I would do in that situation. This enables me to do exactly that, which again is amazing to be to be quite honest. So I think Audio Movers is absolutely perfect for mixing, for mastering, for teaching, and also for recording. There are various ways that you could make that work. You could send somebody the backing track. They could play and record and simply send you their rough mix for you to listen to using Audio Movers, and you could make suggestions. That's kind of the simplest setup. But you could even have something quite complicated, and bear with me if this doesn't come across... (laughs) Uh, that well if I describe it. But imagine you have a stereo mix in your DAW and you stream that to the vocalist, say, in a recording situation. They have the receiver plug-in in their DAW and they hear your mix coming in. They then route that mix straight back to you. So they have a copy of the Audio Movers plug-in as well and they stream it back to you. But they also have another instance of it on a separate channel on the vocal channel, and they stream that back to you as well. So you play the audio out to them in real time, they send it straight back to you with the vocal overdub, and you record both in your DAW. Now obviously there's a delay with the audio being sent and returning, so none of this audio is going to be in sync with what you had originally, but if you include some some kind of sync pulse at the beginning of your recording, you know, stick clicks if you have a drummer, or just uh, metronome clicks if not, when those two audio streams come back to you, the stereo reference mix and the new vocal overdub, you can record both of those in your DAW and then you simply have to go in and trim the clicks off of the beginning of both of them. You can then delete the reference mix because you don't need it anymore, but the vocal will then be in sync with the performance in your DAW. Depending on how precise you are, you might need to make some minor adjustments, but probably not. And that's a truly remarkable situation if you think about it. You know, the audio is on your computer, you send it, they sing back to you, and you record it back into your DAW. So again, that's going to work absolutely fine for overdub situations. You could even do a group overdubbing situation where there are other band members, for example, anybody else who's involved in the production process listening to those streams that come from the singer, so the the backing and the new vocal, or it could be a bass, it could be guitar, it could be anything, uh, everybody gets to listen to that. Everybody can be in a group Zoom chat and discuss and make suggestions and give feedback. They can all watch your... DAW screen if they want to, if you share your screen with them while they're working, if that's helpful. The possibilities, to be honest, are pretty much unlimited. The only thing you're not going to be able to do is actually record multiple musicians at the same time if they need to listen to each other. Of course, there is lag between the audio arriving and coming back to you, and that's why you won't ever be able to get everybody playing in sync with each other with audio movers at least, where you do have a minimum of 100 milliseconds audio latency. Having said that, if performing with other musicians is the reason you're interested in this topic and listening to this episode, hang in there because there are some solutions that might help you do that. But before I get to those, I just want to talk about the other options that are available to achieve a similar result to what I'm talking about. So some of these have been around for a while. Um, there is a plugin called Source Connect, which is uh, basically intended as an ISDN replacement. Uh, the kind of this this situation we're talking about with remote recording used to be done down telephone lines uh, with a system called ISDN, which was quite expensive. I think initially, at least, you had to have dedicated hardware. Source Connect also is relatively expensive, but is definitely uh, very much a professional solution to this. So if you're doing a lot of this work or you need to do a lot of this work, then Source Connect might well be worth looking at for you. For most of us though, it's probably overkill, I would say, and certainly the setup is very 
complicated in comparison to audio movers. So if you're looking to experiment with this and get up and running very quickly, I would still stick with my recommendation of audio movers. There is a plugin called Session Wire that achieves something very similar. I believe that has a video and audio link, but that's Mac only, but that's something else you might want to experiment with. There's Steinberg make a plugin called VST Connect that has been able to do this for years, um, but that works only in Cubase and Nuendo, as far as I'm aware. So again, that's a fairly limited, well, that's a more limited user base, let's say. There's a slightly different approach, Pro Tools Cloud Collaboration feature, which I think it was added in Pro Tools 12.5. And also there's a, a complete DAW that includes this kind of functionality called Ohm Studio. The difference with both of these is that rather than listening in real time, the person at the other end needs to have a DAW that they can record into. And it's simply the case that any files that they include or any changes that they make to the project are basically synced to your machine immediately afterwards. So you just have to wait enough time for the audio to reach you and to be updated in your own project. That's also something that lots of people already use. I think it's very functional. It's just not quite as interactive as literally playing something along and talking to somebody over video chat at the same time about it. Now, you might be wondering why I made the distinction that the person doing the performance needs to have a DAW there and thinking, well, surely that's the same for any of these situations. But one other possibility you might like to explore is the fact that, in fact, listen to doesn't really require a DAW at all. If you're sending the mix out to someone and then they're sending the performance back and you're recording them at your end, you could just use an application like Audio Hijack. And I've actually tested this myself. Audio Hijack is perfectly capable of capturing a live performance and sending it back along with the backing track as a reference. So in that situation, your client or your artist wouldn't even need a DAW. Whether the setup of that is any easier um, than, for example, getting them to download a copy of Reaper, which is available free for use for the first month, and just talking them through the process of inserting the plugins in the mixer. I mean, I guess that's a general uh, caveat to all of these things that I'm talking about. You do require somebody who's prepared to kind of go through this initial learning curve of getting the system up and running. But I would imagine that most creative people would at least be prepared to attempt it at this point. If you're somebody who is, you know, has been really focused on getting your album recorded or writing songs or whatever it is that you're you're doing, um, to have work grind to a halt because of the, the current situation with the virus would be intensely frustrating. So I'd imagine there would be plenty of people who would be at least open minded to the idea of working with you on a solution like this. So there's one other option that I want to briefly describe to you. Uh, everything we've talked about so far has been very digital. And this is getting slightly off the, it's not about real-time collaboration at this point, but it's even possible to get some genuine analog flavor into your mix. Let's say you've had intended to, you've recorded and uh, done rough mixes of your work yourself and it intended to work with somebody who had a, a lovely studio full of analog gear. Uh, one option you have is simply to use audio movers listen to to send your streams to them, uh, get them to run it through the gear whilst tweaking the settings and sending it back to you till you get the sound that you like and then record it back in. So that's that's one option. But there are also some websites that are specifically aimed at this kind of approach. Um, where they're offering you the ability to use analog hardware of your choice in your mixing and recording and mastering projects. And I have to admit, I haven't looked into this in a ton of depth. I'm sure there are other options available as well, but two that I'm aware of are theaudiohunt.com and mixanalog.com. Both of those enable you to request the kind of gear that you want to use and offer a way for you to have your audio processed with that gear using the settings of your choice. So the current situation doesn't even prevent us from getting some lovely analog vibe into our recordings, if that's what we're hoping for. And finally, uh, I mentioned earlier that none of these solutions I'm talking about really 
are going to help you if your goal is to perform live, to, to rehearse or to play live with friends. And take it from me, the video conferencing and video chat applications really don't work well for this application. I did wonder whether it would be possible to use Audio Movers Listen 2 for this as well, but actually the round trip audio of 200 milliseconds at a minimum is enough to, to kind of scupper any kind of real time performance, unfortunately. However, Lidge Shaw and I, Lidge from the Recording Studio Rockstars podcast, which if you're not listening to it already, now is the ideal time to discover that podcast while you're isolated from the world and needing uh, something to keep your brain from <laughs> seizing up, other than the archives of this show, of course. We tested an application called Jam Kazam, uh, J-A-M-K-A-Z-A-M, which is supposed to offer exactly this functionality. Now, we weren't able to get it working well enough. The latency was too high for us to be able to even count in time together. But I do wonder whether that was because my internet was substantially slower than Lidge's. Uh, even on a good day here out in my countryside location in the UK, I only get 30 megabits per second download, but more importantly, I only get 7 megabits per second upload. And actually the performance has been much lower recently because of the extra demands that the heavy usage uh, of the online services because of the virus, because everybody's working from home, is placing on the system. And also, <laughs> Lidge and I are on either side of the Atlantic. So you might want to experiment with Jam Kazam yourself and see whether you can get it to work, especially if you have super fast internet, you know, 100 megabits per second up and download, and are physically located more closely. So the honest answer is I don't know whether that works but it would be worth a try, I think, if your goal is to be able to perform and play uh, with friends and maybe even rehearse as a band. Another interesting option is something called Ninjam, which operates specifically in the Reaper DAW. I mentioned earlier on that Reaper is free to use for the first month. It's super affordable, even if you decide that you want to go ahead and buy it. And rather than go into lots of detail about Ninjam, instead I will point you to an excellent video made by Kenny Joyer, who again has been a guest on the show in the past. I'll put the link to that in the show notes at themasteringshow.com. He shows you how to set up Ninjam and demonstrates it in use. It's a really interesting concept where basically, the, rather than try and get the real-time latency super, super low, as with Jamkazam, in Ninjam, the audio latency is counted in bars. So you're actually playing along with performances that have happened several bars earlier from the other musicians. So you're not actually hearing them play in real time, but it feels as though you are. Now, I can't quite get my head around how this works in practice. Um, I think it's only going to work if the harmonic structure of what you're jamming to is very clear or I guess maybe fairly simple. But the video that Kenny shared is pretty persuasive and explains everything very clearly. So if your goal is to jam rather than perform a, a pre-recorded piece, uh, then maybe Ninjam would be an interesting option for you. And the final thing I want to mention on this episode is a new iPhone app literally released in the last few days which was created by Tim Exile, who is an amazing live looping musician. Uh, he's released various plugins in the past. He has this incredible live show where he builds up these amazing improvised jams, basically looping and processing himself, um, almost exclusively noises that he's made with his mouth. I highly recommend you check it out just for the the insane musicianship and creativity that Tim has. But all of that has now gone into a new iOS app called Endless with three S's at the end of it. And it's completely addictive. Um, I've stayed up much too late the last three or four nights playing with it. It's pretty hard to describe, but it somehow manages to pack into a single app the ability to record from a microphone and loop that or play various virtual instruments and loop those. You can 
overdub or process audio that's been contributed by other people taking part. People can kind of come and go from the, the jam session. Again, it doesn't actually allow you to perform literally in real time with other musicians in the way that you might, you know, one person sings and another person plays, but it really does feel like an actual jam session where you're feeding ideas off of each other and contributing to the ongoing evolution of the piece of music that you're working on. And in a public jam, anybody can join in at any point. And there's one which is uh, microphone sources only, I think it's called, where the rule is that everything that's contributed has to be recorded live, either on the a phone mic or a mic that's been plugged in via uh, a USB connection or an external interface. That has a very analog feel to it, much more kind of organic and real sounding, at least some of the time, until people start getting in there with the processing and the effects. Um, but others, are, you know, they're kind of, there's minimalist techno, there's pretty much any genre of EDM you can find is, is represented there, but they all kind of evolve and twist and mutate in entirely fascinating ways. And you can even at the end of the session or at any point export um, the, you get eight audio layers running simultaneously. You can export those audio layers and take them away and play with them in a more traditional uh, music recording environment, if you would like, providing you have the permission of the other people who are performing in the jam with you. It's almost impossible for me to describe in words what this app is like, but uh, if you're craving a bit of musical interaction and you're partial to a little bit of electronica or EDM or live looping, I strongly recommend you check out Endless. Uh, they've even made it uh, free to use for the next two months uh, in recognition of the fact that everyone is trapped at home by this current virus situation. So I think it's amazing and hopefully you might too. So there you go. That was a, a whistle-stop tour of the options that I'm aware of for working remotely at a time like this, or any time, quite honestly, but particularly now. I'm sure I haven't found all of the options, in particular on the performance and live jamming side of things, so please do uh, send me a message or comment or make me aware of other options so I can pass those on, because I'm getting a lot of questions about this since I released my YouTube video. And I hope maybe there's something there that you might find useful or interesting that would enable you to carry on being creative or maybe even profitable in this situation where normal operations have been suspended for the foreseeable future. So thanks to Ian Stewart and Lidge Shaw for helping me investigate the possibilities with the Listen To plugin and with Jam Kazam. Head over and leave us a review on iTunes to help other people discover the show. Thanks to Kaylee Law, as always, for letting us use his music. Thanks to John Tidy for editing and mixing the episode. And thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.